Hi everybody, I'm Trisha and welcome to the show. As scrapbookers we tend to work in maybe a 12 by 12 or an 8.5 by 11 format, but sometimes on a Saturday morning when you have to quick make a project as a special gift for grandma or a little break book for your purse, it's wonderful to make a little handmade book that accomplishes all of the, the fun of scrapbooking in a, just a smaller size. And today I would like to show you how to make this awesome little maze book. It's made with only one sheet of 12 by 12 paper plus the outer covers. And it's so easy, so let me show you how to get it done. Now the very first thing I want to show you is what this 12 by 12 paper will do when we have it inside of the book. Now it appears as if these are all little 3 by 3 inch pages that have been cut and glued together or folded somehow in a long accordion. The problem was when you have an, a long accordion like this it really requires a very wide sheet of paper and like I said it's only a 12 by 12. So let me show you the clever part about the maze by bringing in our full sheet of 12 by 12 paper. So once you learn this, you can do it over and over again with all the papers that you happen to have that are 12 by 12. Some simple folding we're going to do with our bone folder to help us make those folds beautiful. I'm just folding the paper in half. We can all do that. I've been doing it since we've been in kindergarten. It's just that maybe this time we want to pay particularly close attention to the quality of the fold that we're making. We want to make sure our corners line up beautifully. You can see what I've just done here, taking the open edge and bringing it up to the top of this fold to fold my paper in half again. So now I have this, reinforce. Okay, then I'm gonna turn it over. Here's my free edge, bring that up to the top, fold that in half. And now what we have here is something that looks sort of like a W. Let's just open that all up flat again so that the folds are going vertically. Let's fold it in half this way now. And what we're doing is basically creating a whole bunch of 3 by 3 inch squares out of our 12 by 12 paper. Notice I'm using caution just to make sure too that my folds are square. Turn it so the free edge, bring it up. I sometimes say bring it up to the mountain because this is a mountain fold up here. And reinforce. This is a heavier paper so it can be a little challenge but it's going to make a nice sturdy book that will last. Folding in half. This is the last fold. What we've basically done is created another W going the other direction. So we did one this way, we did one this way. Let's flatten that sheet out. Now remember how long that paper appeared. We need to make a series of cuts that will help us create our maze. Now a maze is going to mean that every single one of these blocks is connected with a pathway in between. This is the route we want our book to take. In order to do that we need to make a total of three cuts. One here and then stopping. One that starts here stop there, starting here, and going up to there. Now I've actually gone ahead and made a couple of these cuts. Here's my first cut, there's my second cut. So with my ruler and my craft knife, I'll just lay it firmly right on the line. Now you can use the scissors with this too. If you're not real comfortable with a ruler and craft knife, just go ahead and use a scissors. It's an art, not a science. Now our maze is complete. It looks sort of like the letter M, or if you happen to have it this way, the letter W and you can see every square is connected by only one seam. This is when we get to create our maze. So I'm just going to take the paper and fold it, turn the corner, bring it back up. You can see how easy this is. Now this fold goes that way and this way and look what we just made. It's our little maze. Now when you look at this you'll see that there's a little opening here and a little turn here. That's just simply where you turn the corner of your paper. So you can actually use those to make other design opportunities such as pockets for tags and such. Um, but for all intents and purposes the inside of our book is done. Now I want to show you how to go about preparing the covers. Now for these we need some nice sturdy mat board. This is three and a quarter by three and a quarter square because remember our, we created three by three inch pages with our maze folding. And then we also have our cover that's about an inch larger at four and a quarter by four and a quarter here. And we're going to need some book binding glue. Now a little tip about book binding glue is when I'm working with it I just keep it on its side because then you don't have to sit and wait for it to make its way down to the top of the nozzle. Just store it on its side. We'll remove the cover and we're going to put some glue. Now gluing sounds like a pretty easy thing on the surface, but I have learned through the years that sometimes 
it's good to have a few tips about glue. I just applied in a circle and I brushed the glue to cover the entire surface of this mat board. I simply want to make sure I have enough, but not too much. And I always like to have it out to the outer edges. So just start from the inside and brush your way to the outside. Place that down. And I love this glue because it will dry quickly. Pretty much ready to move on to the next step, which is creating some beautiful mitered corners. With the scissors, I'll come in and I'm going to make a cut. And I'm going to make sure that I leave some space extending beyond the tip of the corner of my mat board. Because if you don't leave some paper there, you'll be able to see that cardboard corner. And you know what? If you're going to go to the trouble, might as well do it right. Next, I'm going to teach the paper what I want it to do by scoring and bringing my bone folder underneath it and showing it that, hey, I want you to wrap yourself around this mat board. And we do this before we add glue because once we add the glue, we want it to be able to stick easily and we're just going to do a little training for this paper. So now we've prepared it. Again, in applying the glue, notice I stored it horizontally so the glue is ready at the tip. I'm going to put the glue right in the joint where the uh, paper comes in contact with the mat board because I will be able to avoid glue oozing out everywhere. Notice I'm brushing it, once again, just like I did with the cover, brushing it to the outer edges of our paper. I have it thoroughly covered, but not too much glue that is going to ooze out when I actually put this cover in place. All right, so here I have my side. I'm going to turn it and then take the other side, okay? A little bit of oozing here in the corner, but that's all right. Now, remember when you learn how to wrap a gift and how you tuck in the side of the gift before you bring the last flap up? Imagine that in miniature here, because this is what's going to create a beautiful mitered corner. I'm going to take the tip of my bone folder and actually do the little tuck. I hope you can see that. It's just a little tuck, but it's going to make, when I fold this over, the perfect corner. Now, again, as long as you're doing it, we want to do it the best that we can. So this is a minor detail. If it doesn't concern you, don't worry about it. But for me to be able to have that tip and know that I'm going to make the perfect corner every time, there's no wondering here. This is going to be beautiful. Another little tip, take your side of your bone folder while your glue is still wet, square off that corner. You know, it's a little detail, but your book will look like it's been made by a professional. When really, in all honesty, this might be your very first one. Even so, you can also flatten the corners with your bone folder as well. That is a beautiful cover, ready to go to hold my maze book. You'll repeat that with the second one. I happen to have made one already for you ahead of time. So next, we want to have a closure for our book. So we have some ribbon right here. It's about a yard, but it's way more than we'll probably end up needing. Find the center of your ribbon and just sort of place it with the center about right here in front of your covers. Come back with the glue and just make a tiny line. My glue was sitting flat on its side on the table, so it was right there where I needed it. I'm just going to smooth it out slightly. Make sure I keep about maybe half of an inch there and lay the ribbon in place. Push it down, ready to go. All right, remember this guy? We're going to bring him back onto the scene. He kind of unfolded himself a little bit. Now, what I want you to do at this point is isolate this one flap of our inside portion of the page. And we're going to make that same swirly circle of glue, brushing how? To the outside. Okay, now that I have the glue all in place here, I can put it on my cover, just centering it, smoothing it, and just make sure you're centered on all the outsides. It's going to leave a really nice little border. Then you'll do the same thing on the other side. Isolate. Why do we isolate it? Because if we don't, the glue will probably go on to the second page and then our pages start sticking together and then you might get frustrated and, and then do the same thing. Just put it right into place here on this cover and you might have to make some fine tuning adjustments. The glue will give you a little bit of time to do that, but once you start doing things like this or coming in with your bone folder and smoothing it into place. All right. Now when I close my beautiful little maze book, it's all ready to decorate. So you simply maybe take some stickers and put them onto the cover, the back cover, add your photos inside. So then here it is when it's completely decorated. It's just some simple stickers have been added. Maybe I'll give this one to my mom. Happy Mother's Day. And some index photos right here on the back. We've added another handmade just for you sticker, a little tiny photo. And in the inside, 
Just some beautiful floral photos. This is so easy. This is less than an afternoon or a morning. It's just a matter of hours, really, and you can have a beautiful completed book. Maybe you want to make one for Dad. How about this color scheme? Right here, a nice little twill closure. We've got some casual looking staples in the inside holding those pockets together so I can actually add some tags and such inside the pockets. Some journaling, more pictures inside. You can see how great and liberating this format can be to work in and only one sheet of 12 by 12 paper for the inside. Isn't that awesome? All right, well I hope you enjoyed the show today and I hope you'll try making the maze book for yourself. Thanks for watching. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.